You know it's bad when the best player to ever wear a New York Giants uniform rips the week one performance of this football team. Let's talk about it. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green, and let's dive into it. Lawrence Taylor, myself, you, and everybody that watched that game on Sunday was embarrassed to call themselves a Giant, a Giant fan, a Giant alumni, and Lawrence Taylor ripped the New York Giants. Carl Banks said this on his podcast with Bob Papa on the Believe Network, Believe in Giants. Check him out. Shout out to Carl. He said this, I can tell you, when we were lining up to go out to be introduced as the top 100 players, and a guy who never really comments on games because he doesn't watch any of them, it was Lawrence Taylor. He looked at me, and this is a true story, folks. If you want to know what we were thinking at halftime, LT looked at me and he said, Carl, I could pick 22 of us right now and go out and play better than these guys. We'd win this game. And the youngest guy in that line was probably 50 years old. Lawrence Taylor looked at me and said, I can get 22 of us and go out there right now and whoop these guys' ass. The thing is, Lawrence Taylor actually believes this. And look, he's not right. Lawrence Taylor's 50-something years old, maybe 60. Carl Banks, they are all, look, it wouldn't be close. But that's how bad the New York Giants were. Lawrence Taylor, the best defensive player in NFL history, the best player to wear an NY on their helmet, was disrespected by the way the Giants played football. It was an embarrassment to all of the legends that were in the building. Michael Strahan, Justin Tuck, Carl Banks, Bill Parcells, Eli Manning, Tom Coughlin, All of the greats that we all loved growing up, watching, idolized. They felt the pain that we did as fans watching that football team play yesterday because it was a joke and it was a disrespectful move and a disrespectful style of play to all of the Giants fans out there. And look, I don't want to come up here and always have to do this, but you know what? It is what it is. It all starts with the quarterback. It is a quarterback league. You are only as good in 2024 as your quarterback. And nobody respects the Giants. And the reason is because Daniel Jones is the quarterback of the New York football Giants. You only go as far as your quarterback. And we saw Ivan Pace, an undrafted free agent, shit talk Daniel Jones and the New York Giants prior to the game. He said, We're about to go crazy, man. It ain't even going to be a matchup. That's bulletin board material. But it didn't matter because they did go crazy, and it wasn't even going to be a matchup. What about Andrew Van Ginkle after the game on his pick six? I saw what set they were in, and he just threw it to me. I knew he had to throw it quick, and he just threw it right to me. But it's more than just the Vikings players that they recently just played that are disrespecting and not giving any respect to the New York Giants. It's former legends. It's former people we grew up idolizing. Brandon Jacobs, 2-7. He said he's tired of blaming the offensive line for every damn thing. Why would he say that? Because the offensive line played fine yesterday. Maybe because he knows who the real problem is. What about Janoris Jenkins? I'm not going to call him a Giants legend, but over the past 10 years, he's one of the best cornerbacks to ever play for this team. Calls him Dan Dan the Doo-Doo Man. <laughs> Dan Dan the Doo-Doo Man. We got Smitty laughing in my face right now. Add the shit emoji. He also said this. It's the QB, not the organization. I think it is partially. Part of the problem is the organization. Shit rolls downhill from top to bottom. The Giants are a joke, and that starts with John Mara. I'll just go for what he says. It's, not the, Q, it's the QB, not the organization. What about Tom Brady when he spoke at FanFest? He said, I can't just go out there and rip quarterbacks. Like, if a quarterback like, he could have named any quarterback in the NFL. 
He said, Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones throws an interception, I can't just go out there and rip him because his family's watching. There's 64 quarterbacks on active rosters in the NFL, and he singled out Daniel Jones. What about we just rewind the clock two and a half weeks ago when the media at joint practices asked Sauce Gardner about Daniel Jones, and he said, um, yeah, he's a good quarterback. Yeah, I mean, and he had nothing to say because Sauce Gardner knows Daniel Jones is not a good NFL quarterback. What about last year when the Giants played the San Francisco 49ers? Eric Armstead says, Daniel Jones, I am so disappointed in you. Why would you throw the ball so quick for us and then let people have a career day? Why weren't we deserving? What about Jaquan Brisker? Not really anybody special in the NFL, but he doesn't respect him. Says MVP, LOL. Talking about Lamar Jackson not getting paid. Other bruh got paid today and is trash, fam. Facts. Juan Brisker doesn't respect Daniel Jones. What about Baker Mayfield, who has resurrected himself into a solid NFL QB? Says, I cannot believe the Giants took Daniel Jones. It blows my mind. Some people overthink it. That's where people go wrong. They forget you've got to win. So we've got Giants legends, people that have worn this jersey, people that have been a part of this organization, people that have success outside of this organization, people that have played against Daniel Jones. NFL players know who is good and who isn't good. And Giants players know who's good and who isn't good. The Giants locker room knows Daniel Jones is not the guy. Kayvon Thibodeau popped off to Jordan Renan in the locker room. You don't think he's frustrated that his quarterback doesn't give him a chance to win? Dexter Lawrence popped off about the fans booing. You don't think Sexy Dexy's pissed off that Daniel Jones is his quarterback? The Giants locker room knows he's not the guy. They also probably know that there's no one on this roster that could do a better job. But Brian Dable is flirting with that line. He's towing and walking that line of losing this locker room because he's going to continue to have Daniel Jones as his starting quarterback. We got to talk more about this in a second, but I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Game Time. If you're looking for last minute tickets to the Giants, to the Mets, Yankees, maybe you want to go catch a Knicks games this year, do it with our proud sponsor, Game Time. The best seats for the lowest price guaranteed. Prices drop as the events get closer. And yeah, you get the lowest price guaranteed. And if you use that promo code Chat Sports, you get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. You get to see your seat view. In the app, you get to access your tickets from your phone, and it's easy to resell your tickets within the app. Last-minute tickets and flash deals, lowest price guaranteed. If you use the promo code CHATSPORTS, you save $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. Make sure you are taking advantage of their two new features that make the app that much easier to use. First, all-in pricing. The price you see is the price you pay. No hidden fees when you get to check out. And then game time picks. The app is going to filter out all the clutter and make it that much easier to buy tickets to your favorite team, go see your favorite artist, or go watch your favorite comedian perform. Giants, concerts, theater events, and more, and $20 off your first purchase with the promo code CHATSPORTS. So download the app, create an account, use the promo code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, for $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. We don't have to overthink this anymore. We are almost 2,000 days into the Daniel Jones experience. The, when you try to go against the grain to the degree that I think Daniel Jones extremists have, and you try to prove to yourself you're the smartest in the room, you're always going to be wrong. And look, you didn't even have to overthink this after the 2022 season. Even when I said on video I thought it was a fair contract. Obviously, it is not fair. It's only fair for Daniel Jones because he robbed us. I say this on the Knicks channel all the time because I think it's easier to understand in basketball terms. But process over results. I believe that in life. I believe that in sports. And I'm going to start applying it to the New York football giants. Process over results. If you look at the 2022 season, it was like, oh, you got to pay Daniel Jones. He went to the playoffs. He won a playoff game. He played well against the Vikings. But what if you look at the process over the highlighting results? And that's what I mean by that. Daniel Jones in 2022 played 16 games. He threw 15 touchdowns. Okay. 
We know he rushed for seven touchdowns. All right, 22 touchdowns in 16 games. What about the stats that matter? How often do you make NFL caliber throws? How often are you making a big-time throw? Daniel Jones' big-time throw percentage in 2022 ranked 39th among all quarterbacks that participated. If you forgot, there's only 32 teams in the NFL. What about turnover-worthy play percentage? How often do you make decisions that could lead to turnovers? Well, he did that at the 21st percent. Way too high. How far do you throw the ball down the field? Your dot average depth of target, 40th in the NFL. So in 2022, his best year in the NFL, he threw the ball downfield at the 40th highest rate. He had the 21st highest turnover-worthy play percentage and 39th big-time throw percentage. That's all you needed to see, and I'm upset I didn't notice that earlier. John Mara thought he was the smartest in the room. What was the quote? We've done everything to mess this kid up. He's like Eli Manning, but more mobile. No, he's not. No, he's not. And the Giants, I was talking to my dad on the phone after the game on Sunday. He's like, what could they have done? Well, one, you could have re-signed Tyrod Taylor. Because Tyrod Taylor is a better pro quarterback than Daniel Jones. He showed that last year. You could have went out and signed Sam Darnold. You could have went out and traded for Justin Fields. He's 1-0 in this year. You could have went out and signed Russell, West, Russell Wilson. There were multiple things you could have did. But what'd you do? You gave Drew Locke $5 million, and you never really had a legit competition. When Daniel Jones, in training camp, Drew Locke didn't take one snap with the first offense. There should have been a legit quarterback competition. The Giants should have drafted a quarterback. And I don't mean in round one. I would have loved for them to get Drake May. I would have loved for them to get Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams. Wasn't going to happen. But it didn't mean you didn't have to draft one in round two, or you couldn't draft one in round three, or you couldn't draft one in round four, five, six, or seven. But you didn't. And you just gave him the job. John Mara, you had an easy out after last year. Another neck injury. A torn ACL. You had an easy out to move out on from Daniel Jones. And now... You put this kid, you put Daniel Jones in a spot where New York Giants fans are waiting hours after the game and the players' only entrance and exit outside of it. And they are booing this man as, they walk to his, as he walks to his car to go home to his family. You know why they're booing? Because they are fed up with your decisions, John Mara. You tried to convince the smartest fan base in the world that this guy was an actual NFL quarterback. Not for one year. Not for two years. Not for three. Not four. But five years. You tried to convince them. It is boiling over. People have met their limit. And Daniel Jones is the one that's going to have to suffer. Way to go, John. It's only going to get worse. Like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You thought the boos were loud week one against the Vikings? Don't come back to MetLife Stadium if you lose to Washington and then you lose to Cleveland and then you're 0-3 with the Cowboys coming to town in week four. Because, man, oh, man, it is going to have a lot of stars in the seats. A lot of Cowboys fans will be there. People are going to stop going to games. You're going to have an away game atmosphere at home sooner rather than later. Man. I'm not sure how anyone survives this at this point. Like, I can't even properly evaluate Joe Shane or Brian Dable because he's dealing with a guy back there that's handicapping this football team. I really want to believe in my heart and in my mind that John Mara forced Joe Shane to re-sign Daniel Jones. But I don't think that's fair. And it's because I do think Joe Shane is a good GM. But if you're a GM and you just got a team to the playoffs in your first year and the owner is making you re-sign somebody, why don't you just resign and tell everybody that and go get another job? I think deep down, Joe Shane was probably a part of wanting to bring him back. And you know what? I bet Daniel Brian Dable does too. And that's a decision he regrets every day. I can't even evaluate him. I think everyone that was involved. Like, week one overreaction? Here's my week one overreaction, because I don't think I've overreacted one time yet. 
Week one overreaction, every single person, every single staff member that was involved in the Daniel, extension, Daniel Jones extension, see ya. You got to go. Get that stank. Get that trash off my football team. Because if you, for one second, Joe Shane, John Mara, or Brian Dable, believe that you could build a Super Bowl winner, a Super Bowl contender, a year-after-year football team that's going to win the NFC East, if you thought that could happen with Daniel Jones as your quarterback, you shouldn't be allowed to rebuild this football team. It's only going to get uglier. It really, really is, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I want to come up here and be happy. I want to come up here and be recklessly optimistic. I want to be 1-0 and today and make a video about why we can go 17-0 and and make the playoffs. But I don't get to do that. I got to freaking talk about who's going to score the first touchdown of the season for the Giants in week two for the second year in a row. Hopefully they turn it around. I don't know who I can believe in right now that has decision-making power in the Giants. But if you want to see it happen, hit that thumbs-up icon. Make sure you are following me on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on IG. At Marshall Green underscores the handle on both. Give me a follow, and let's go Big Blue.